So next we are going to see the another problem. Four electric charges plus Q plus Q minus Q and the minus Q are placed at the corners of a square of sine two L. The electric potential at a point A midway between the two charges plus Q and the plus Q. CD square sine of a square is two L. Midway between these two positive charges is A. Then the distance of the A point from this charge is L. The distance of the A point from this positive charge is L. This is center of the square point O. Now, what is the total electric potential at a point A due to all other charges present at the corners of a square? Already we know that. One positive charge is placed in an R medium or vacuum or free space produces electric potential at this point to P through a distance R. V is equal to 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon R Q divided by R. Here 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon R is K. So V is equal to K Q divided by R. Come to this problem. First plus Q charge produces electric potential at this point A through a distance L is V1. V1 is equal to K, the charge is plus Q, Q divided by distance is L, equation number 1. Next, another plus Q charge produces electric potential at this point A is V2. V2 is equal to K, Q divided by with the same distance L. Equation number 2. Then, negative charge minus Q charge produces electric potential at this point A. We don't know the distance of the A point from the minus Q charge. The distance. We are going to the distance of the A point from the minus Q charge by using Pythagoras theorem. The distance is L. Another distance sin of a square is 2L by using Pythagoras theorem A point and C point AC square which is equal to L square plus 2L whole square so AC square is equal to L square plus 4L square then AC square is equal to 5L square then distance of AC is equal to square root of 5L square then AC is equal to root 5L. So, this minus Q charge produces electric potential at this point A through a distance root 5L, that is V3. So, V3 which is equal to K, the charge Q divided by distance is root 5L. But the nature of charge is negative. So, negative charge produces electric potential at this point A is negative potential equation number 3. Then another minus 2 charge produces electric potential at this point A with the same distance root 5L that is V4. V4 is equal it is also negative charge produces negative potential at this point A minus K Q divided by root 5L equation number 4. Then what is the total electric potential at this point A due to all the charges present at the corners of a square Take the algebraic sum, V is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3 plus V4. So, V is equal to KQ divided by L plus KQ divided by L plus minus KQ divided by root 5L plus minus KQ divided by root 5L. Then V is equal to 2KQ divided by L minus KQ divided by root 5L minus KQ divided by root 5L. V is equal to 2KQ divided by L minus 2KQ divided by root 5L. Then V is equal to common term taken out. 2KQ divided by L divided by L of 1 minus 1 divided by root 5. 
then V is equal to K value 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught. So 2 Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught L 1 minus 1 divided by root 5. Third choice. 2 Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught L of 1 minus 1 divided by root 5. So next problem, electric potential V at any point along the three coordinate axis x, y, z all in meter in space is given by V is equal to 4x square measured in volt. Then electric field at a point x is equal to 1, then y is equal to 0, then z is equal to 2 in volt per meter is given by. See in this problem, Electric potential V which is equal to 4x square. Variation of electric potential along the x-axis only, not in y-axis, not in z-axis. So, electric field intensity E vector is equal to minus dV divided by dx along the x-axis only. So, therefore, E vector is equal to minus d divided by dx V value. 4x square along the x-axis. So, E vector is equal to minus 8x along the negative x-axis. So, resultant electric field intensity is minus 8x i cap. 8 along the negative x-axis. So next problem, four points are this minus q, small minus q and two q and another two q are placed one at the each corners of a square. The relation between capital Q and the small q for which the potential at the center of the square is zero. Let us consider square. Square of side A. So, A, B, C, D. There are four points of the corners of a square. Minus Q chart is placed at point A. Small minus Q is placed at a point B. Then 2Q is placed at a point C. Then 2Q is placed at a point D. The relation between capital Q and the small q for which the potential at the center of the square is 0. See the center of the square point is 0. Then distance of the center of the square from the from its one of its corner is psi divided by root 2. It is the distance of the center of square from its one of its corner is psi divided by root 2. Minus 2 charge produces electric potential at this point. This small minus 2 charge produces electric potential at this point. 2q charge produces electric potential at this point. Here 2q charge produces electric potential at this point. So what is the total electric potential at this point which is equal to 0? First charge V1 is equal to negative charge produces electric potential at this point is negative potential minus k q divided by distance a divided by root 2 which is equal to minus root 2 k q divided by a equation number 1. Another this small minus q charge produces electric potential at this point with the same distance a divided by root 2 that is potential v2 is equal to minus k q divided by a divided by root 2 which is equal to minus k root 2 q divided by a equation number 2. Next, third charge, 2q charge produces electric potential at this center of square to a distance a divided by root 2 v3 which is equal to k 2q divided by a divided by root 2 which is equal to root 2 into 2 kq 
divided by a, equation number 3. Then, capital 2Q charge produces electric potential in the same point through a distance a divided by root 2, V4 is equal to K 2Q divided by A divided by root 2, which is equal to root 2 into 2 K Q divided by A, equation number 4. But in this question, potential at the center of square is 0. Net potential at this center of square V net, which is equal to 0. So therefore, net potential at this point due to all other charges V1 plus V2 plus V3 plus V4, which is equal to 0. V1 value minus root 2 KQ divided by A, then plus second potential minus K root 2 Q divided by A plus third charge produces electric potential 2 root 2 kq divided by a plus 2 root 2 k capital q divided by a which is equal to 0 then minus root 2 kq divided by a minus root 2 kq divided by a plus 2 root 2 kq divided by a plus 2 root 2 kq divided by a which is equal to 0 then 2 root 2 kq divided by a plus 2 root 2 k capital q divided by a which is equal to root 2 kq divided by a plus root 2 k small q divided by a so commonly a a get cancel k get cancel root 2 get cancel then 2 q plus 2 capital q which is equal to q plus small q then 2q minus q which is equal to q minus 2q then q which is equal to minus q or q which is equal to small minus q this is a relation connecting in between capital q and the small q capital q is equal to minus q first choice so next problem there are two metallic sphere of radius 1 cm and 3 cm are given charge minus 1 into 10 power minus 2 coulomb and 5 into 10 power minus 2 coulomb respectively if these charges are connected by a conducting wire then final charge on the bigger sphere let me assume there are two metallic sphere one is radius R1 is equal to 1 cm. Charge on the first sphere, Q1 is equal to minus 1 into 10 power minus 2 coulomb. Another sphere, conducting sphere, has a radius R2 is equal to 3 cm. Charge on the bigger sphere, Q2 is equal to 5 into 10 power minus 2 coulomb. So initially, both the metallic sphere not connected by a thin piece of conducting wire. Potential of the first sphere V1 is equal to K Q1 divided by R1. V1 is equal to K Q1 value minus 1 into 10 power minus 2. R1 value 1 centimeter 1 into 10 power minus 2. So 10 power minus 2, 10 power minus 2 will cancel. V1 is equal to minus k. Then potential of the second sphere V2 is equal to k q2 divided by r2. V2 is equal to k q2 value minus q2 value 5 into 10 power minus 2 divided by radius of the bigger sphere 3 into 10 power minus 2. 10 power minus 2. 10 power minus 2 get cancelled. V2 is equal to 
5k divided by 3. See, smaller sphere has a potential negative potential, bigger sphere has a potential positive potential. So when compared to these two metallic sphere, bigger sphere has a greater potential because 5k divided by 3. Charges is positive charges is transferred from bigger sphere to smaller sphere, but both the sphere has the same potential V1 is equal to V2. Bigger sphere loses its charge, the same amount of charge is gained by the smaller sphere. So therefore, V1 K Q1 gains the X charge divided by radius 1 cm 1 into 10 power minus 2, which is equal to bigger sphere sphere loses its charge K Q2 minus X divided by radius 3 into 10 power minus 2. Bigger sphere loss the X amount of charge from the Q2 then smaller sphere gains the same amount of charge X already original charge Q1. So therefore K, K get cancelled. 10 power minus 2, 10 power minus 2 get cancelled. Then Q1 plus the X which is equal to Q2 minus X divided by 3. The next term, Q1 plus X which is equal to Q2 minus X divided by 3. 3 Q1 plus 3 X which is equal to Q2 minus X. So, 3 Q1 minus Q2 which is equal to minus X minus 3 X. So, 3 Q1 value minus 1 into 10 power minus 2 minus Q2 value 5 into 10 power minus 2 which is equal to minus 4x. So, minus 3 into 10 power minus 2 then minus 5 into 10 power minus 2 which is equal to minus 4x then minus 8 into 10 power minus 2 which is equal to minus 4x so therefore 1 2 minus minus get cancelled x is equal to 2 into 10 power minus 2 coulomb so 2 into 10 power minus 2 coulomb charges are transferred from bigger sphere to smaller sphere then what is the final value of charge on the bigger sphere. So, final value of charge on the bigger sphere is Q2 minus X. Here X is the quantity of charges transferred from the bigger sphere to smaller sphere. Then value of final charge on the bigger sphere is final charge on the bigger sphere which is equal to Q2 minus X. So, Q2 value 5 into 10 power minus 2 minus X is the transferred electric charge from bigger sphere to smaller sphere is 2 into 10 power minus 2 then 3 into 10 power minus 2 coulomb charge. Final charge on the bigger sphere is 3 into 10 power minus 2 coulomb charge. Charge transferred from the bigger sphere to smaller sphere is 2 into 10 power minus 2 coulomb. So, last of charge by the bigger sphere is this much amount, the same amount of charge is gained by the smaller sphere 2 into 10 power minus 2 coulomb. So therefore, but you are able to calculate the what is the final charge of the bigger sphere which is equal to actual charge minus transferred charge from the bigger sphere. Actual charge 5 into 10 power minus 2 coulomb minus transferred charge 2 into 10 power minus 2 coulomb. So 3 into 10 power minus 2 coulomb charge persisted by the bigger sphere. Right choice 3 into 10 power minus 2 coulomb, second choice. So, next problem a thin spherical conducting shell of radius R has a charge Q and another charge capital Q is placed at the center of the spherical shell. Then, the electrostatic potential at a point P at the distance of half of the radius of the spherical shell from the center of the shell. So, let us consider one charge in the spherical shell center of the shell, radius of this spherical shell. 
charge on its surface Q, then plus Q charge is uniformly distributed on its surface of the spherical shape. Now, we assume the point from the center of the spherical shell, the P point, the distance of the point P from the center of the spherical shell is R divided by 2. At this point, what is the resultant electric potential due to Q charges uniformly distributed on its surface of the spherical shell? Another one charge, capital plus Q, is placed at the placed at the center of the spherical shape. So here, Q charge produces electric potential at a point P and also capital Q charge produces electric potential at a point P. Then resultant electric potential at a point P, P is equal to V1 plus V2. First we are going to calculate the electric potential at a point P due to Q charge. So it is the same that of electric potential of the sphere, V1 is equal to Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught and radius of the spherical shell R. Then electric potential at a point P due to plus Q charge is placed at the center of the shell to a distance R by 2. V2 is equal to capital Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught distance of the point from the center R divided by 2. Then V2 is equal to 2Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught R equation number 2. This is equation number 1. Then what is the electric potential at this point to P? V is equal to V1 plus V2. V is equal to Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught R plus 2Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught R. Third choice. So next problem. If the electric flux is entering and leaving on an enclosed surface respectively is pi 1 and pi 2, then electric charge inside the surface will be. According to Gauss's law, net flux through the closed surface, which is equal to Q divided by epsilon naught. So we have net flux through the closed surface, which is equal to net electric charge enclosed by the closed surface divided by epsilon naught. Let us consider closed surface. So, pi 1 is electric flux entering the surface. Pi 1 is the electric flux entering the surface. Pi 2 is the electric flux leaving from the surface. Pi 2 is the electric flux leaving from the surface. Then charge inside the surface. What is the net charge inside the surface which is equal to? So, net flux which is equal to net charge divided by epsilon naught. Net flux. So, leaving flux. Electric flux leaving from the surface is taken as positive. Electric flux entering into the surface taken as negative. So, therefore, net flux, electric flux leaving from the surface pi 2 plus electric flux entering into the surface it is pi 1 minus pi 1 which is equal to net charge enclosed by the surface divided by epsilon naught. So therefore pi 2 minus pi 1 which is equal to net charge enclosed by the surface divided by epsilon naught. In this problem copy the electric charge inside the closed surface net charge q net which is equal to pi 2 minus pi 1 into epsilon naught. pi 2 minus pi 1 into epsilon naught. first choice. Two spherical conductor B and C having equal radii and carrying equal amount of charge ripples with each other with a force F when kept apart at some distance. A third spherical conductor having a same radius as that of B but uncharged, which is brought in contact with the B. Then the brought in contact with the C next and finally removed away from the both the new force of repulsion between B and the C. See the problem. There are two spherical conductor B and the C. One spherical conductor B. 
another spherical conductor C. Both the spherical conductor has the same radius R R. And also it carries the same amount of charge, equal charge Q Q. And the distance of separation apart at its center R. Then electrostatic repulsive force between the two charged conductor according to Coulomb's law. F is equal to 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon r q into q divided by r square. Then F is equal to 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon r k q square divided by r square. This is equation number 1. Then a third spherical conductor having the same radius as that of B. B and uncharged. This is third spherical conductor. It is A has the same radius as that of B R, but it is uncharged. It is brought in contact with the B. Brought in contact with the B. But B possesses a charge Q, radius R. So a uncharged spherical conductor is the same radius as that of B is in contact with the charge of B is Q, then charge is transferred from B conductor to A conductor because the charge distribution is takes place. After distribution of charges, what is the final charge of the both the spherical conductor? So, B charge, B spherical conductor has a charge Q, A spherical conductor there is no charge Q divided by 2 which is equal to Q divided by 2. So, after distribution of charges, A spherical conductor possesses a charge Q divided by 2, B spherical conductor has a charge Q divided by 2. Then, brought in contact with the C and finally removed away from both the both, then the new force of repulsion between B and the C. This A spherical conductor is brought in contact with the C. Then C spherical conductor radius R has a charge Q. Then A spherical conductor has the same radius R. Now the charge is Q by 2 brought in contact. Then redistribution of charges takes place. After redistribution, what is the final charge on the both the sphere? Q plus q by 2 divided by 2 which is equal to 3q divided by 2 divided by 2 then 3q divided by 4 so after redistribution of charges charge on the c sphere q is equal to final charge on the c sphere which is equal to 3q divided by 4 now finally, then A sphere is removed. A sphere is removed in both B and the C. Then what is the final force of repulsion between B and the C? Finally, C sphere has a charge 3q divided by 4 and B sphere has a charge finally q divided by 2. Then C sphere has a final charge which is equal to 3q divided by 4 and B sphere has a charge final charge which is equal to q divided by 2 with the same distance of separation apart at its center or what is the final force of repulsion this is frame which is equal to k final charge 3q divided by 4 into another charge q divided by 2 divided by r square then f prime which is equal to k 3q square divided by 
8 divided by r square then f prime which is equal to k q square divided by r square into 3 divided by 8 then f prime which is equal to k q, k q square divided by r square is f so 3 divided by f 3 divided by 8 into f fourth choice so easy final force of repulsion between c sphere and b sphere is 3 eighth of initial force of repulsion so next problem two points p and q are maintained at a potential of 10 volt and the minus 4 volt p point having a potential 10 volt vp and the q point has a potential vq is equal to minus 4 volt then what can you moving unrolled electrons from p to q there are two point p point and q point so electric potential at a point p vp is equal to 10 volt electric potential at a point q vq is equal to minus 4 volt so take 100 electrons moving from p to q 100 electrons moving from p to q calculate the amount of work done if moving 100 electrons from p point to q point we know that amount of work done in moving the charge w is equal to potential difference multiplied with moving charge we know that difference in potential w is equal to change in potential is final potential vq minus initial potential vp into moving charge q so w is equal to final potential minus 4 volt minus initial potential 10 volt into moving charge q w is equal to minus 4 volt minus 10 volt into q w is equal to minus 14 volt into q then w is equal to minus 14 into charge possessed by the 100 electrons n into e w is equal to minus 14 number of electrons 100 charge possessed by each electron is 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 but electron possess a negative charge then total amount of work done in moving a 100 electrons from p point to q point w is equal to minus into minus plus 14 into 10 power 2 into 16 into 10 power minus 20 therefore w is equal to 14 into 16 into 10 power minus 18 joule so 14 into 16 so what then w is equal to 224 into 10 power minus 18 joule w is equal to 2.24 into 10 power 2 into 10 power minus 18 w is equal to 2.24 into 10 power minus 16 joule the amount of work done in moving a charge from p point to q point is a 2.24 into 10 power minus 16 joule range as is third 